Well, praise the Lord and good evening and welcome to Sunday evening service. And tonight we're going to be digging back into the Word of God and I'm really excited for that. And uh, we do uh, have a prayer uh, request tonight. And so I'm about to give that uh, to you. And it is a prayer request that came in from Jordine. And she's asking, uh, she, here's the prayer request. I'll read it to you. Uh, Katie's mom had a double lung transplant a little more than a year ago. And her husband was just diagnosed with COVID-19 while being vaccinated. Please pray her mom does not get sick and healing for her dad. And uh, we just want to pray right now for Katie's parents. Uh, let's, let's go to the Lord and we'll pray for them and we'll pray for the service. Heavenly Father, we just bring uh, Katie's mom and dad before you, Lord. And I, I know that they know you, Lord. And I do pray, God, that you would just uh, protect them and keep them. Uh, we know that safety is from you, and Lord, we just pray for their healing and protection, Lord. God, we just ask that you would uh, deliver them from uh, any danger. And Lord, I just thank you right now. I thank you that you, uh, that you love us so much, and I thank you that you're there for us all the time. Lord, you're so faithful. You're so wonderful. We love you so much. We ask that your blessings would be upon your word tonight and upon our study tonight. And Lord, I pray that we would learn from your word tonight. God, I do truly thank you. You're so good to us. You're good to us all the time. And Lord, we love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay, well, tonight we're going to start out 1 Kings chapter 9. We're going to be talking about faithfulness. And this is something that God wants for each one of us to be faithful. God is always faithful. Amen. But uh, when it comes to his his children, sometimes believers and you know, going back to the children of Israel, that faithfulness was not always demonstrated. And in your life and my life, I think we can identify with the fact that we definitely need to be faithful. We thank God for his grace and his mercy. Amen. Well, first Kings chapter nine. Let's start at verse one. We're going to read on down to uh, verse nine. Let's read. And it came to pass when Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord and the king's house and all Solomon's desire, which he was pleased to do, that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time as he appeared to him at Gibeon. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever, and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. And if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, in integrity of heart and in uprightness, to do according to all that I have commanded thee, and will keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will, I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever, as I promised to David thy father, saying, there shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. But if ye shall at all turn from following me, ye or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them, and this house which I have hallowed for my name, will I cast out of my sight and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. And at this house which is high, every one that passeth by, it shall be astonished and shall, shall hiss. And they shall say, Why hath the Lord done thus to, unto this land and to this house? And they shall answer, Because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt, and have taken hold upon other gods, and have worshipped them and served them, Therefore hath the Lord brought upon them all this evil. Wow. Amen. Wow is, is something when you read this. You know, these are, this is something that the Lord is, is answering. He's answering a prayer that Solomon had prayed. And God had said that that house that Solomon had built, the temple that he had built, that God was going to put his name uh, there forever, that his eyes and his heart shall be there perpetually. I mean, the Lord... I mean, think about that. He said that his name, his eyes, and his heart shall be there perpetually. 
if you you know and he was asking faithfulness if thou will walk before me as david thy father walked in integrity of heart uprightness to do according to all that i have commanded thee and will keep my statutes and my judgments see he's he's asking for what faithfulness obedience to his word you see this is not something new um you know this is, shouldn't be shocking to you because as a christian you're called to obedience you know to to walk after the lord jesus said if you love me keep my commandments you know the bible tells us that if you say that you love him and don't keep his commandments that you're a liar so we, we need to keep his commandments jesus said deny self take up your cross and follow me right we need to continue if we if we if we turn off listen to what happened to them what the warning was the warning was in verse six but if ye shall at all turn from following me ye or your children and will not keep my commandments and my statutes which i have set before you but go and serve other gods and worship them then will i cut off israel out of the land which i have given them and this house which i have hollowed for my name and will cast out of my sight so he's going to cast all of that out of sight, cast them out of the land. This was the this was a warning. Now, this is a warning to to Israel that this would happen, and it actually did happen. You see, we're going to get to we're going to look at that tonight in Jeremiah. We're going to go to Jeremiah uh, right next. Uh, but I want you to see that God gives them a warning. He gives them an opportunity to not go into that sin, to not go into be uh, you know uh, have this happen to them, but. They didn't listen. And let's go to Jeremiah chapter 1. We'll start there. Well, chapter 2, actually. Jeremiah chapter 2, starting at verse 1. And we'll read down to 13. Let's read it. Jeremiah chapter 2, starting at verse 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness in a land that was not sown. Israel was holiness unto the Lord, and the first fruits of his increase. All that devour him shall offend, evil shall come upon them, saith the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me, and have walked after vanity, and are become vain? Neither said they, Where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, that led us through the wilderness, through the land of deserts, of, of pits, through a land of drought, and of the shadow of death through a land that no man passed through and where no man dwelt. And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. But when ye entered, ye defiled my land, and you made my heritage an abomination. The priest said not, Where is the Lord? And they that handle the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after things that do not profit. Wherefore, I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. For pass over the isles of Chittim and see, and send under Kedar, and consider diligently, and see if there be any, if there be such a thing. Hath a nation changed their gods? which are yet no gods, but my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and have hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. Wow, I mean, look at the the heart of the Lord in this in this passage. You know, God is 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 reminding them of His care for them as He took them out of Egypt. He cared for them in the desert where nobody lived. God cared for them. He fed them. He He gave them water. He gave them shade. You know, the cloud by day, fire by night to keep them warm. And then in the desert, that would be very important because, you know, it's very cold in the desert. 
He cared for them, and their, their clothes didn't even wear out. And he brought them as he faithfully promised to bring them into the promised land. And yet, they turned away from following the Lord. They started following Balaam. They started following false idols. They turned their, their glory into shame. You know, it's, it's amazing that the, the one who is truth, they turned away from to a lie. They put their faith and trust in an idol that couldn't see, hear, or talk. God is pleading with them to turn. But they didn't turn. You know, this is uh, this book of Jeremiah is is it's a tragic, right, uh, reminder of what happens when a people turn away from the Lord and turn unto vanity. Solomon in Ecclesiastes talks a lot about vanity. He uh, he he says, "Vanity of vanity, all is vanity. Everything outside of God is vain." The, the things that you hold of such importance in this world, they're, they're truly vanity because they don't last. Wealth, power, position, uh, possessions, they hold nothing for eternity. People fight and scramble for pieces of land, and yet this world will be burnt up. The things that people should do, loving God, loving one another, following the Lord Jesus Christ, being a blessing and not a curse, they don't do. And the things they should not do are the things they do. This is what Israel was doing. And God warned them and warned them. You know, and, and as you go through, if you have gone through the book of Jeremiah, as I have, I mean, I've gone through this book and, and I've been shocked at the hardness of, of the heart of these people. You know, it, it's just, you know, it's like in uh, Jeremiah 5, Jeremiah 5, 7. How shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me and sworn by them that are no gods. When I had fed them to the full, they then committed adultery and assembled themselves by troops in the harlot's houses. You know, this is just absolute sinfulness that had, you know, these people had embraced, you know, idolatry and, and just, it, it was absolute evil that they have done. And, they, and, it, and it was all, it was all through Israel in, in the leadership the leadership that should have been watching out for them is the, the same leaders that were doing wrong. I mean, it says there, it said uh, back in Jeremiah 2, verse 8, The priest said not words of the Lord, and they that handled the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal. I mean, th this is a bad situation when the people that are supposed to be looking out for their spiritual good were actually embracing evil. It's a bad thing. Yet I kind of see that today it's happened in this nation people uh, that are supposed to be in uh, looking out for people spiritually they're not doing it they're embracing all the things the culture says is okay to do and they're and they're oh they're just tripping over themselves to be politically correct they've forsaken God's word and embraced the word of man you know not only in 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 moral issues, but even in uh, even as you go into creation itself and look at creation, they stop giving God, you know, the the glory for creation, and they start embracing scientific, you know, nonsense about millions of you know, millions of years. I mean, listen, you might want to get it right. God created the world, everything in it, in six days, and rested on the seventh. He said the evening and the morning. For the first day, then the evening, morning, second day. So that's evening in the morning. That's, hello, that's 24 hours. It's 
a day, millions of years. So get it right. Amen. Trust what God said. If you don't trust what he said, then you're calling him a liar. But the Bible says, let man is, you know, let every man be a liar, but let God be true. God is the one who tells the truth. God is true. He is the truth. If it comes between trusting man and trusting God, you know who I'm going with? God. And I pray that you're going with God too. Let's read, let's read on what happened. Jeremiah, go, if you would, all the way to chapter 39. Zedekiah, uh, king of Judah, had been warned by Jeremiah. He had been told, given opportunities by God to turn from sin so that Israel would not experience what they're about to experience. But at every turn, he didn't listen. Harden his heart. Let's read Jeremiah 39, starting at verse 1. In the ninth year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the tenth month came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army against Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and they besieged it. And in the eleventh year of Zedekiah, in the fourth month, the ninth day of the month, the city was broken up. And all the princes of the king of Babylon came in and sat in the middle gate, even Nergal Shazir, uh, Sam Garnibo, Sars Kem, um, Rebaceris, Nergal, Shaz Rezar, uh, Rabmag, with all the residue of the princes of the king of Babylon. And it came to pass that when Zedekiah, the king of Judah, saw them and all the men of war, then they fled and they went forth out of the city by night by the way of the king's garden by the gate betwixt two walls, and he went out the way of the plain. But the Chaldeans' army pursued after them and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho. And when they had taken him, they brought him up to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, to Riblah in the land of Hamath, where he gave judgment upon him. Then the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah, in Riblah before his eyes. Also the king of Babylon slew all the nobles of Judah. Moreover, he put out Zedekiah's eyes and bound him with chains to carry him to Babylon. This is a tragic end to Zedekiah. And it's a, it is a absolute stern warning for us about not hardening our hearts towards the Lord, about heeding his, his, his warnings in his word, about listening to what God says and not hardening our hearts. Zedekiah witnessed the deaths of all his sons. They were, they were killed before his eyes. And all the nobles of Judah, all of those, those uh, you know, those political uh, folks, killed before his eyes and then they put out his eyes so the last thing that he saw was the deaths of his son all of his sons and his nobles and then they put him in chains and take, took him to Babylon and then the Chaldeans they burnt down the, uh, the king's house and the houses of the people with fire and break down the walls of Jerusalem why did that happen to them? Well, we, we learned why it would happen to them back in, in Kings, right? When we were, we were back in, in First Kings, going back over there. Chapter 9. First Kings chapter 9. But if ye, verse 6. But if ye shall at all turn from following me, ye or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them, and this house which I have hollowed out for my name will I cast out of my sight, and all Israel and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among the people. 
And at this house, which is high, everyone that passeth by shall be astonished and shall hiss, and they shall say, Why hath the Lord done thus to the land, to this house? And they shall answer, Because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt, and have taken hold upon other gods, and have worshipped them, and have served them. Therefore hath the Lord brought upon them all this evil. So we see what happened. God warned them very early, a long time before this happened. God warned them not to do this, and they did it. And it had a heavy, heavy price. Amen? A heavy, heavy price. And yet God warns us as the church, you know. He, he, he gives warning after warning to us today, you know, about enduring to the end, to be an overcomer, to not put your hands to the plow and look back. You know, God warns us. He He sends, He give us, He gave us His word. So that way we would be able to, to go through all of the things in this life that we will need to face. We can face them because we have the Lord's word. We have the Holy Spirit, the comforter. We have, we have uh, you know, we have what we need in order to do what God called us to do. But what we have today is we have a generation that thinks that they can do what they want, whatever they want. They can, you know, they can go out and, and uh, you know, get drunk. They can go out and, and uh, get drugged up, and they think that they're okay with that. Forgetting that God said, be holy, for I'm holy. Do you think that you think that it's okay for you to go against what God says in his word and think that everything will be okay with you? God loves you. He does. God's merciful. He is. God knows that we're not perfect. We're not. Mm -hmm. But that is no license for us to, to go out and sin. It is it's absolutely not right for us to do that. What does it say here in 1 Peter chapter 3? Let's go there. 1 Peter chapter 3, starting at verse 10. Let's look what it says. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Don't think that you can do whatever it is that you want to do, and there's not a cost to it. Will God keep you from going shooting up drugs? You know, he, he may not stop you, but he's already warned you. Is he going to stop you from going out and, and, and drinking a whole, you know, bunch of alcohol and getting drunk and acting stupid? He may not stop you, but he's already warned you. The Bible says God's not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. We're accountable for every vain word that comes out of our mouth. Do you think that the deeds of your body are not equally going to be held responsible? He says that the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Do you really want that? To put yourself in opposition against Almighty God. God loves you. He loved Israel. He warned Israel. God warns us. Will you do what God says is evil and think that you're going to be rewarded? It will not work like that. You know, God is absolutely loving. But he is absolutely just. You know, there is so much in his word, 
so many things that God warns us of. So many things where he says, you know, that, that we need to listen to. He that has ears, let him hear. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 4. Let's read it. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 4 says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly, and deliver just lot vexed with the filthy communication of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanliness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Imagine this. That, that God is saying here, showing us and giving us examples about what happens when you live ungodly. When you, I mean, he didn't even spare the angels that sinned. The angels that sinned were cast down to hell. The old world before the flood was destroyed because they went after sin rather than going after God. Sodom and Gomorrah turned to ashes, burnt up as an example to those who after should live ungodly. Lot was delivered, but his soul was vexed with their filthy communication, but God delivered it. So God's showing you that he can deliver you in this generation. At this time, he can deliver you. You're faithful. But if you go this direction, it says, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations. He knows how to deliver you. Do you want to be delivered? God knows how to deliver you. This is why it's such a cop-out when I hear people saying, oh, I just have to do drugs. No, you don't have to do drugs. No, you don't have to drink alcohol. You, what, what you're doing is copping out. What you're doing is, is giving in to your flesh. What you should be doing is trusting the Lord to deliver you. Are you? Or are you just making an excuse for your flesh? Because let me just tell you, the only person you're deceiving is you. God's not, he's not deceived by what you're doing. He knows your very thoughts and he knew your thoughts before you ever were born. So what you need to do is repent. Stop making excuses for your flesh and ask God to forgive you. Start trusting him. Start leaning upon him. Start looking to him. But do everyone a favor. If you're going to continue in sin, if you're going to continue to live that way and, and you, you just like, I just want to, you know, I want to continue to, to do drugs. I want to continue to do. If you're going to do all that, then please do us all a favor and take off, take off that descriptor that you have on your name saying I'm a Christian because you're not. You're not if you're continuing in sin. We got the world. We got way too many people in the world being impacted by people who are just steeped in hypocrisy, and this is why we got to get rid of that mess out of our lives, out of the church. We got to repent. We got to ask God forgiveness, and we got to get real with God. Stop making an excuse for your flesh. That's what I'm saying. I see it way too often, and it happens more frequently, more frequently in these last days. Everybody's blaming somebody about what's going on. You know what? Listen, every person that's born on this in this on this planet, every person that's born has got something that they're going through. What your something that you're going through is different than my something that I'm going through, you know. But everything that everybody's going through, everybody on the planet 
has experienced these kinds of things. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. So instead of saying, oh, well, the world owes me this because I've gone through, I've had a hard life, I've had this happen, I had that happen, and there there are some tragic things that have happened. I I will 100% say yes, I understand, I know about tragic things. But instead of saying that you're owed something, instead of saying that you're going to default to uh, bad behavior, sinful behavior, because, you know, this happened to you, oh, you know, uh, you had a rough childhood, so now you're going to just be mean to everyone. You're going to be evil with everyone. You're going to talk bad about people. Or you're going to, or you had a rough time in your in your life, something happened to you, and you, when you were in school, so now you do drugs to try to cope with that. No, let me just tell you something right now. You need to put the drugs away, and you need to trust Jesus Christ. You need to put your faith and trust in God, because God knows how to deliver you out of temptations. He knows how to deliver you if you want to be delivered. Is your faith real? Because we've had too many fake Christians throughout history. The Jewish people, look at what they were doing. They're pastors. They're leaders. They're priests. They weren't, they had the title, but they weren't following him. They weren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. They were following Baal, an idol. And today we have the same thing in the Christian church. We have people that have the title Christian, but they're not following Christ. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. But we got people today that say, oh, I, you know, you don't understand what I've been through. You know what? I personally may not understand what you've been through, but I can tell you right now, God knows what you've been through. He wasn't sleeping somewhere when all that happened to you. He very well knows what happened to you. And he expects you to put your faith and trust in him. He'll see you through. He'll get you through. Don't you remember Psalm 23? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. He's right there. You don't need drugs. You don't need alcohol. You don't need any of the vices. You don't need any of this stuff. You just need trust in the Lord. Put your faith and trust in him. He will never let you down. He will see you through the darkest valley. He will be right there with you. Don't make excuses. Repent. Ask God forgiveness. We got a job to do. We can't do it when we're broke. And a lot of the church today is broke. So let's get it right with God. Repent. Ask his forgiveness. And let's start following him and doing what he called us to do. We got a whole big world of people out there that need Jesus Christ. We have to be faithful. In our words and our thoughts, and in our actions. Faithful. Put your hands to that gospel plow, and don't look back. Amen? Well, it's a little early tonight, but God bless you. That's all I got for you. Remember, God doesn't lie. He tells the truth at all times. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And he's told you, you got to keep his commandments. No matter what the world says is okay. If God says it's wrong, it's wrong. Don't do it. God bless you. I love you. We'll see you again uh, tomorrow night. Encouraging Word broadcast at 6 o'clock. God bless. We'll see you then. Have a blessed night in Jesus.